Okay, welcome everyone. And thank you again for joining us. Uh, as we mentioned, we're gonna be going through a quick demo of how to set up SmartSuite and build out your first solution as we call them and set up automations and all that good stuff. And so just a quick overview, as you can tell over here, this is the homepage of SmartSuite. And typically um, you'll have over here many different solutions for any key process that you have within your organization. And then you can obviously favorite certain solutions. You'll have your resources over here on the side. Um, a few ones I'd like to highlight, which are our webinars. We constantly have our upcoming webinars on all sorts of different topics. Uh, we have a really exciting one coming up pretty soon. What's coming? What, what's new and coming in Smart Suite soon? So that's a really fun one to learn. We have a lot of exciting announcements. Um, but we obviously have our mobile apps, iOS and Android. You can download easily. Um, we have an academy that's going to be coming out in a few weeks from here. We have our community, which has become more and more active. Um, where folks are just sharing their use cases, asking questions. It's an excellent community. And we have our help center, very detailed docs, which you can also reach from within here, super detailed. Um, you can reach the team anytime. And as you can tell, the reply is under 10 minutes. Um, very helpful team. And you can send us Loom videos of your setup and questions and whatnot, super helpful. But then over here, we have a help docs. You can search for any particular help docs. And as you can tell, very um, detailed documentation with GIFs and pictures and all that good stuff um, right here within the app. Um, we also, the other thing I'd like to highlight is the template gallery. And so over here, you'll have basically over 200 templates, best in class, solutions for key processes within different industries and types of processes or departments. And if you just click in and kind of go through the structure real quick, even without downloading it into your space, if you just take a look at the solution, the different views, which we'll expand on in a moment, um, you'll get to see kind of just a little bit of like the thought process that goes in behind building different solutions and how things are linked to each other in the different fields. And I think it's a great starting point to be able to start wrapping your head around, you know, how do you how do you use Smart Suite and what you can build with it. Obviously, the possibilities are endless, but I'd really encourage people to check out the template gallery specifically for processes that they're looking into so that they can just kind of get an idea what's possible in Smart Suite. You can search for any particular solution over here. You can change the display. Of, of how you wanna list the solutions, it's just a preference, but you can search for any particular one in here. We have our global search settings, which you can search for records, files, members, or anything, and you can search across all solutions or pick a specific solution that you wanna search into. This is kind of like a power search button. Um, we have our member directory, which basically shows you all the different members, team members within a, within your workspace, and you can see like additional information and even download a vCard. This is helpful for large organizations when you wanna kinda see who else is with you and as you kinda cross, come across them within the processes. We have start items, which you can basically, it's, instead of favoring a solution, you can star specific items, whether they're apps or records, et cetera. Um, and then we have the My Work section, which we'll expand on a little bit more, but in short, this is an area where every particular user in the platform can see a roll up of all of their tasks by due date, overdue today, upcoming, their closed assignments, and they can dive right into that specific record and start working on it, communicating on it, et cetera, and then reach back out. So this is basically a daily agenda. Um, and this will roll up from across any solution or any throughout the entire platform, as long as it's treated as a task. And we'll expand on that a little bit more on how SmartSuite is smart enough to know if a particular record is actually a task that should be rolled into the My Work section, or it's just a data point that doesn't necessarily have to roll up into the My Work section. Um, obviously, the key piece is going to be the assignee that this person has assigned me. Um, but uh, you also, we'll talk about it later, but you have to also link the assignee to status in order for it to show up in My Work. Otherwise, just a data point with an assignee. Um, notifications is a similar concept. You go through all the different notifications that you have and you can filter through them. And again, similarly, if you click into a specific notification, you can actually reach um, that particular record 
So if I click in here, that I'm reaching the, no the record that I'm getting a notification about. I can see who gave me the notification, mark, mark them all as red, and go into my notification settings. It's just a quick overview. Obviously, you'll have more solutions over here. Down here, just a few key things to mention. We talked about the help docs and the support within app. Uh, the other piece that is really important is reporting bugs and helping us improve smarts. We, we love getting customer suggestions, feedback. And so we have a public roadmap, which you can reach over here, where you can reach over here on a separate page. And we're very active in it. We're constantly listening. We're posting back designs of specific uh, products. And so um, of specific enhancements. And so as you go through, add features, upvote features, um, we'll, we'd love to have you participate in our uh, product enhancements. And so without further ado, I'm going to actually dive in. So to hey, just, Avi. Yep. I was curious if um, we had a request to see a setup approval process for a record once it's been set as a status ready for appro approval. A record approval process. Okay, that makes sense. I'll try to touch on that within within the main yeah. demo to marketing to just touch on like our statuses and approvals and how they can get assigned to different people as as the approval flow happens. Um, and so I guess the, I'm going to jump right into the basic structure and how things are working. So in SmartSuite, we call these tiles over here solutions, right? So these are different solutions and you can obviously add more from within a template or start from scratch. And then within each solution, we have what we call apps. And so apps are basically tables within a specific solution, right? So, and you can add, you know, countless apps within a specific solution. And then you can obviously have many different solutions within your space. And so let me go into, okay. So we have over here a sample app with client projects. And then, so what we have over here with, once you're within an app, I'll just show you a few quick things. And so first of all, these are obviously each custom fields which you're probably familiar with. If you've used other products, you can come and add custom fields. We have over different 40 different uh, custom fields that are data validated. And so, you know, for example, for full name is not just a text box where you say I'm using this for full name, but you actually get to validate the data over here and say, am I gonna use first name, middle name, last name, right? And then you get to basically cancel it you you get to like uh, validate that someone's actually entering a first name and a last name, and you can even have a title and choose what titles you're going to allow. And once you add that, it's not just a simple text name, but it's actually you know a drop down for title, first name, last name. So that's we go a little bit above and beyond in terms of validating different data fields. Obviously, we also have the standard text fields, etc. A few a few ones that people get excited about is time. So there's time tracking. Um, we have like I showed full name, email, and phone number, these validate, same thing with address. We have yes, no, that are all sorts of like different buttons and different formats, uh, ratings, voting, tagging, social networks. Um, we have tasks, we have checklists and sub items. So sub items have their own custom statuses and, and their own custom field types. They're basically a record nested under another record. And checklists are basically quick to-dos that you can do um, by just adding a, a task with a due date and an assignee, um, and so on and so forth. And so as you come in here and you set up your different apps within a solution, you'd add different custom fields that relate to the types of data you want to track on this table. And then, you know, you can obviously come in here and, and record. One thing I want to point out is we have a lot of different settings on each custom field type. So for example, on the title field type, you'll notice that you have two options, first of all, manual input or auto-generated. By default, it's manual input, which means you're basically coming in here and adding a title to each record that you're adding. But note that you have two options that you can uncheck and check, which is A, require entries to be unique and require an entry to this field. Uh, these are both specific, um, these are both specific uh, settings that you can uh, enable or disable. The other cool piece on title is auto-generated. So if I switch to auto-generated, I can now add certain text and I can pull in any field that 
that exists over here and it auto generates. So if I, for example, pull in, uh, you know, full name uh, project and I update the field, the title will automatically generate. Now it's not, it's pulling in only project because full name is not filled in. But as soon as I start filling out the full name and saving it, as you can tell, the full name gets populated over here along with the word project. And you can add as many as you want. So I can add in here, you know, who the signing is or client people use this in very creative ways. I'm gonna switch back to manual input um, as it was before. And but that's just, you know, that's just an example on title, for example, right? Then you have, for example, our on our single select. So first of all, you have, how do you want to display it, right? You can choose all these display options. You can have a default value, right? And then you can, again, do you want to drop down radio, require an entry, allow users to add new choices? And then here's another cool feature actually, which is you can include value and these can be referenced in formulas. And so you can assign a value to each one of the uh, single select dropdowns, and you can include a choice description that will show up right under the single select. So as you can tell over here, I'm gonna update this field. My internet is a little slow today, um, but basically instead of creating a whole separate table to be able to create a formula that references values for each of these single select fields, all you have to do is come in here, include values, and you can assign values that can later be used in a uh, in a formula that is in this table, right? So as you can tell over here, the description just updated and now I have my description right under my choice. That's just one example of many, obviously, um, you know, for example, you can come in here, this is an actual currency, so you can choose the currency, the precision, allow negative numbers, require an entry to be unique. You know, in full name, we, we talked about this, but again, require an entry in this field, and you can choose if you're having middle name, last name, title, all that. And so it's just that we give you a lot of customizations on the field level. Up over here, you'll have your controls for this particular view. And so obviously we have fields to display. So not necessarily you have to display all the fields that are in here. Just wanna be clear, when you're adding a field, you're gonna come in here and add a new field here. And when you're choosing a field to display or not display, you can add that over here, or you can actually add it over here, remove from display and that would remove it. Um, and then you would add it over here. You can reorder them, et cetera. And then you have sorting and filters and grouping and spotlight and row size and finding. Um, these are all can be applied one on top of another. So you can have a filter on top of a filter, choose and or or. You can have groupings and subgroupings, right? So you can group within certain groupings and you can reorder the groupings. Um, you can also collapse all the groupings by default. So just a lot of controls here. And then all these dictate along with the type of view that you're setting up, this view type. And you can always come in here and add more view types. We obviously have you know, all these different view types. We're working on uh, Kanban view type as well. Oh, sorry, a Kanban view type is that. We're working on a, um, I'm blinking on the name right now, a Gantt chart. Okay, Gantt chart. Yeah, a Gantt chart. But um, either way, right now we have grid and card. As you can tell, you have different views. Um, and again, each view has its own set of sortings, filters, spotlights, fields to display, so on and so forth. And we can have custom um, private views and public views, right? So views that only you're seeing versus other views. Um, one key point I'd like to touch on over here is the fact that within SmartSuite, you can link to records, not only within the same solution, but across the entire workspace. And so if I come in here and set up a linked record field type, and I by default, I'm linking within the same app, but then when I come in here, not only do I have all of my other apps within this solution, agency marketing, but I get a dropdown of my, all my apps across my entire workspace, obviously grouped by solution, and I can link to anywhere else. I can link from here to my CRM solution. I don't have to sync bases. I don't have to do anything like that. I can search for a specific app, 
search for fundraising CRM or partner CRM app or sales CRM app and link to specific uh, uh, solution and link to a specific app within that solution very easily. And one more thing I'd like to show is when you link, first of all, again, you can control allow linking to multiple records or not require an entry. The linking happens bi-directional. So a link will show, a link field type will show up uh, at the destination where you're linking to. Um, but a setting many would want to use is advanced settings. You get to display which fields you want to show on the linked records so that you don't actually have to click into those linked records. You can easily see uh, all those different field types on the linked record level. You can sort. So when you're choosing, you can sort by a specific field type that's on the linked record. So it's easy for you to find what you're looking for. And you can sort by address, let's say. And you can filter. And so you can say, I only want to sort accounts that the status or that the type is any of, you know, and prospect, customer, and vendor. I, I want to leave partners out because I don't want to link partners to this particular instance. And as you save that and you add the field, when you start linking to records, they're going to be grouped the way you set them up. And right, so they're going to be grouped in that order. They're only going to show from the filter. And then I can easily link. I can also create a new record, which is creating a record in accounts and a completely different solution. But I can go ahead and create that new record there, which will automatically be linked to my contacts over here, to my client projects over here. You can click into any existing record. And again, this is a record that's living in a completely different solution. And as I click into my record over here, I will see all of my linked records. And here are the different uh, field types that we spoke about. Actually, I'm gonna change the display format to an expanded display because I like that better. And you can see over here, again, without me having to click into the record, I can already see key information. Like I can already see the LinkedIn for this company in my CRM without clicking into it. Obviously, if I ever want additional details, I can click into it and pull up the full record. And so that's a really powerful functionality that SmartSuite enables. Um, and there's so much more to it. The other piece is the share view. So the share will share this particular view based on the filters and the sortings and the groupings that you applied. This is a public link you can send to any of your clients or any anyone externally. They do not have to be a SmartSuite user to access this link. And this will constantly, it, this will show them the dynamic table. And so if you have a filter that's, let's say filtering out records based on a certain status, as those records disappear or appear from this view, they will show up on the share view. This basically reflects as a mirror of this view. So whatever you do in this view happens on the share view. Um, anyone who has access to the share view won't be able to touch any of those records. They can only see them. And then any smart suite users internally will obviously be able to update this information. So this becomes very useful. Some people use it for clients, employees, vendors. This is a very powerful feature. Um, as we move in, I just want to show real quick, we have the uh, technical um just have the drop down menu in a second i just have to adjust my screen here real quick um let me just go bottom my zoom controls always get in the way um okay so over here at the top we have our solution drop down um where you can reach permissions we get very granular with permissions you can give all members or specific teams you can group users by teams which is a powerful feature and then you can get into advanced permissions where you give specific people specific permissions between full access editor, contributor, viewer. One cool thing that SmartSuite does is on the app level, we actually enable you to have a separate set of permissions. And so permissions on the app level um, typically inherit from solutions, but you can override and again, give specific team members access only to this app as viewer, contributor, editor, or full access, even if they don't have full, you know, access to the rest of the solution. Or you can- So Avi, them. I have a question here. Mm -hmm. So um, is this available on other platforms? And also, um, I would really like to see the ability to have field permissions. Is this something that's on the roadmap? 
Excellent questions. Um, uh, SMART is actually very granular with these field level permit, with these um, starting with app permissions. I don't believe too many other softwares have this possibility of overriding on the app level. Um, and then in terms of field level permissions, it's actually a very exciting feature that we are working on. You'll notice over here, it's already in the works and it's marked as coming soon. It's already in the menu. Um, but basically what's coming pretty soon is the ability to set permissions on the field, on the custom field level within a record. So you can say these groups of people only have access to edit or even view specific field types on the record. So for example, let's say I brought my client in and they're seeing all their production tasks. I may only allow them to see the status, the assignee and the attachment field type. And I may have 30, 40 other um, custom field types that my internal teams see or specific teams see that my client doesn't even know exist on this record level. And so um, that will be a feature that we're very excited to announce that we're working on. and. We'll be very excited to announce whenever it's coming out, as you can tell it's right here. Um, in terms of, I'm just gonna go into the record level for a moment. Um, the first thing to see over here is that we have something called page settings. And so in page settings, you can adjust the way the page is displayed and each user to their preference and liking. Um, the other piece is, right? Like I'm gonna switch for a second. This is a 50-50. I kind of like the 50-50 typically. Um, but you can see how it's kind of different. We have the comments panel where you can leave comments and even at mention specific users. If you're mentioning a specific user, you can actually assign it to them. So that way only they or the assigner, basically only the assignee or the assigner can mark it as resolved. Users can respond or leave a new comment, right? I'm gonna reply to this comment. I can leave a new comment. And then Emma or I can mark this comment as resolved. And you can filter comments by all comments assigned to me resolved. Obviously, if I mention someone, it will show up in their notification center and they can dive right into it and start working on it. Um, over here, you'll see also comments. If you click in here, you'll reach directly to the comments panel as opposed to reaching the, the record level. Um, you can, oops, I don't know what's popping up. Um, and by the way, you can always use Smart Suite as a, as a typical spreadsheet, right? So you can drag and drop columns, you can resize them. Um, and so you can double click and they auto resize. I like using this a lot. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of functionality that you may be familiar with. Um, going back to the solution dropdown over here, we have integrations and API documentation. The API documentation is solution by solution. Um, you'll have all your documentation there. If there's anything missing, please feel free to reach out and integrate with us very successfully. Um, Zapier, we have field to field and we have make coming up in one of our, uh, I think we're about two releases away, probably before the end of October, hopefully. Um, and then we have automations. Automations is a really cool place that I love to with. And so with automations, you can really set up triggers and actions that basically perform things for you and automate your work within SmartSuite. And so I think we had a question earlier about how do we have a uh, work or a uh, approval flow of a specific record? And so um, what I typically do for an approval flow is maybe you have an assignee and then you have an internal reviewer who's supposed to review it, um, but maybe you only, and, and maybe you'll have a due date for the assignee and a due date for the internal reviewer. And what you'll wanna do over here is you might set up an automation that says, when a record matches a condition where status changes from, you know, let's say any to, is client approved, or actually let's do ready for internal approval. We can add the action that says update a record and we'll update actually not the assign. Well, we'll update the assignee from, you know, specific person to another person, right? So we'll update the assignee to Emma. So now once it's marked as ready for internal approval, Emma will be assigned and that way, Anytime I'm working on a task and I mark it as, so let's take this task. I'm gonna switch the status from 
not started to internal approval, ready for internal approval. And we're going to wait a moment. And what should really happen is the assignee would switch to Emma, just happen in front of our eyes, right? And so now Emma knows she's assigned to this task and she should uh, go ahead and uh, do whatever she needs to do with the task. And you can set up as many automations like that as you want, or as many conditions within the automations. And you can be uh, moving records between different people to make sure they're all doing what they're supposed to do with that particular record. Um, so I'll be, say I set this up, say when a status changes, I want to notify that person. What notifications systems do you offer? Excellent question. And so we're going to add an action over here. And besides assigning you, we're going to add an action and we can send an SMS, a Slack message, a Google message, or an internal email to that particular person. So I can send to, and I can choose a workspace member, or I can choose, or I can pop in an email address in here, right? I can even add a CC and pop in some random email address, info at Smart Suite, and I can type out a specific message, and I can even pull in specific data fields from the record, type out a custom message, and send them a message along with this. So I can do multiple actions at once. Um, and I think someone earlier asked about updating multiple records on a specific trigger. So here's how you would do that. You'd basically add as many actions. You can set up one trigger. And based on that trigger, you can update as many records as you'd like. So another right. thing that we have coming is the automation find function. Um, which will allow you to locate records and update all of those based on that find. Yes, great point. That's coming in one of our upcoming releases where you can uh, pull up records, not only from the, not only the particular record that just had the trigger, but any record across the entire platform. So Avi, I have a, another question for you. Mm -hmm. um, we have an attendee asking if we can check an example of a client portal, which that client portal feature is coming soon. Um, but let's say there's a centralized task manager and they're building separate solutions for a client um, filtered with their particular tasks. Can we update records across multiple bases? Um, I can actually answer this briefly and then Avi, you can add on. Um, we currently aren't able to do that. However, that is coming in um, in the next couple of releases for automations. Yeah, I think for, for this, this release should be in 2.7 or right now in 2.6. Yeah. So by the end of October, right now, as you can tell over here, within automations, you can run an automation across the same app, across the same solution, any app, right? But you can't run across solution only automation. Um, what's going to be coming in the next release is you'll basically be able to not, similar to linked records, not only will you choose an app within the same solution, but you can choose an app across any solution. Um, and so that should be on, as you can tell here, I can easily, by the way, just switch off the automation if I wanted to stop working as opposed to deleting it so that I can switch it back on whenever I want. Um, I'm going to switch it off so that it doesn't fire randomly right now since this is a test space. Uh, one more feature I'd like to touch upon before we open up the ground for more questions is the forms. So forms is a powerful feature where you can set up an externally facing form that you can embed on your website or send a link to clients. You can customize the form and a response to any form can, will add a record to this particular app. And you can, going back to automations, you can even trigger automations when a form is submitted and you can choose a particular form. So you can set up multiple forms that feed into the same app. Let me just do that by adding a view type. So a form is a view type and we can name the form whatever we want. So let's say client forms, or client form. We're gonna create the view and we can add in here, you know, specific um, field types, or we can add more field types over here, right from here, which will create the field type on the app level as well. And you have this, the settings where you can display a success message or a redirect URL, and you can rearrange the forms, etc. Title it. If you're an admin, you can even switch the logo to customize it. 
And then you can grab this link, share it with anyone or embed it. And anyone who submits this form that will add a record to any of the views based on the specific filters and groupings, but it will add a record to this app. And again, like I mentioned, you can trigger automations based off of this. Um, um, do we have the ability for forms to use information from links? Linked records? Um, I think external links. Check and see if maybe add a linked field to um, this particular app. A linked, linked records, he means. Yeah, that is coming link. October 5th, the ability to add linked records um, as well as address fields, signature fields. Um, I think there's one more on the list. Those will all be available in forms October 5th. Thank you, Emma. The other piece over here is obviously, as you can see, you can require specific fields. So that makes it that you can't submit the form without the field. You can add a description, so on and so forth. Um, one last thing I forgot to show on the record level, and we'll close off with this unless there's any questions. Um, within the record level, we talked about page settings. Um, there's a lot more settings to obviously explore over here. You have the history and all that, but one thing I wanted to go into is groupings. And so you can have sections on a specific record and you can call this section, whatever you want to call it. And you can move fields in and out of this section and a section can expand and collapse. As you can tell over here, we have test and we have time. So within time, we have specific fields. And again, you can move these fields out of any um, section, you can move them into a specific section and you can set up as many sections as you want. You can also have sections expanded or collapsed by default. And so this section, for example, is collapsed by default. And so anytime I go into a record here, you know, test is expanded. And then over here, I have time. It's collapsed by default. If I expand it, it opens up. And again, I can collapse it or I can uncollapse it by default so that the fields are always displayed. And this is a powerful way to organize information within records. Um, and so that is, uh, just, I guess, a quick overview of building and automating your first solution. I'm curious to open up the ground for some additional questions. If there's any other topics you'd like me to cover, um, tremendous more hey, to get into. Yep. Can we look into sub items really quickly? Sure. Absolutely. Um, so as I mentioned, sub items is going to be a field type. Um, and if you search for sub items right here, so they come with these default uh, field types. But if you go into settings, first of all, you get to change. So for example, um, I can change any of the field settings, just like you could on the record level, change the requiring entry, all that good stuff. And then you can also come in here and add uh, new field types. And so you can set up your own field types for sub items that are not on the main record level. And you can set up custom statuses, custom field types, you know, single select, multiple select, whatever it is. And as you add those, again, you can set up sorting and fields. And as you add those fields, you can also display like what's going to be displayed first, second, and last. I'm going to add this field type just so I can showcase. And as you can tell over here, all of these are showing zero. That means there's zero sub items. But as I click into here, I can add um, more sub items. Where are my sub items in here? By the way, this is subtasks that I was talking about before. Where um, you can hey, Avi, can yep. we? I think I think um, they were referring to sub items and forms, um, which I'm looking into more information. Um, but the question is, can I modify the URL parameters so that I can have one form but hide fields based on who I want to send it to for sub items? Um, I'm looking into whether we have sub items available on forms. Do you mind checking since you add that out of that field? No, I don't think we have sub items enabled on forms yet. I'm curious okay. what it would be. Yeah, um, that, that should be, we're rolling out a lot of different new fields on these forms. So that should be rolled out pretty soon. Um, I can add you to the feature request. Okay, excellent. So those were uh, sub items as you can, you can add basically different sub items and they will show account for the sub items. Um, let me actually just display checklists real quick so we can showcase checklists. So I'm gonna display checklists on this grid view. And checklists, similarly, you get to add checklists, you get to assign them to specific people, give it a due date, save it. 
And there you can see you have zero out of one. And if you click into it, you can mark it as complete, add new checklists, and so on and so forth. Um, okay, any other questions I can touch on? I see Daniel said plus one for sub items. I love it. I love sub items too. Um, okay, any other questions? This is our smart docs. You can get into smart docs, you have full editing capability. And so, as far as searching um, for info and sub items, that is. Um, thanks for all these requests. Um, I don't, I don't know if that's on the product roadmap, but I'm very happy to add this for you. Um, I can also send a link just for everyone. If there's something that you're, you know, you're, as you're playing around, you don't see, um, you can view our pro public product roadmap. If it's not there. You can go ahead and add in a request yourself. Um, and we check these on a day-to-day -day basis, like Avi was talking about in the beginning. Yeah, um, after the webinar, I think Emma will go through and, and uh, send out additional information if we didn't cover it and add uh, the different requests to the product roadmap, which is very active, like I mentioned, um, or add your vote if it's already existing on the product roadmap. I see another request came in for Smart Docs. So Smart Docs is basically a full document. Uh, I mean, you, basically you have full, it's, it's, it's basically a field type. Um, and then as you can tell over here, you type slash for commands and you have all these different format options, which we're adding more and more, um, but that's basic. It has the capabilities, rich text capabilities as you would in the Google Docs. Excellent. That's a great, that's a great uh, summary. Thank you, Emma. Um, so that's, that's Smart Docs. It's basically a custom field type. And as, as I mentioned before, you can have defaults so a default text on all the Smart Docs which will appear basically anytime you add a new record, that text will show up and so on. There's, I just wanna say there's a tremendous, as you can imagine, there's a tremendous amount of features that you'll find over here. Default on statuses, you can set a specific status on, on complete status by highlighting this. Um, there's a tremendous amount of features in here which are really not possible to cover in one webinar or even two webinars. We didn't even touch on our formulas. I'll just highlight them real quick. Um, we had a full webinar the other day about formulas. So we have the simple ones, right? You can add like the simple functions. And then we have our advanced editor, which you can even use to pull in. If you have linked records, you can pull in using the dot function. You can pull in any um, custom field types from the linked record. Um, okay, I guess I'm gonna close off with one last thing that I did promise to talk about, which is how do we know if a specific record with an assignment should show up in the My Work section or not? And so I'd like to show that for a moment. So in the Assign To field, when you're setting up the field settings, obviously you have a display format and all that good stuff, but you'll see whenever you set up an Assign To field type, there's the section that says Display in the My Work section. It asks you to link it to a status and you choose which status if there's multiple statuses. And that's how we know that it should be displayed in the My Work section. And so if you take this out and you don't display, a, you don't link assign to to the status, then we won't know that you sh that we should be creating this to the My Work section. So let's say you have data points that you just want to track to specific people. You can do that without linking it to a status. The moment you link it to a status, that will start showing up for a user so that a user knows that these are their tasks. And similarly, due date, and I'll just update this field type, due date can also be linked to a status. As you can tell over here, I have these symbols that tell me that it's overdue. And the way we know that this is overdue as opposed to just the standard date field that we may be tracking is because dates are linked to statuses. Again, you can have default dates, you can have display formats and all that good stuff. Um, any other questions? Can we jump into form view? I see we have some questions about forms. Let me see if we can address the form. So in forms, I don't think we have the ability to pre-fill right now anything. Um, I'd love to hear all the different use cases that we have for forms. If you can maybe send that to us afterwards, Emma will follow up with you, Daniel. Um, it sounds like you have some advanced use cases for forms and we'd love to include that on our upcoming releases. Right now, there's no ability to have pre-filled forms. Um, I do know that if you have very advanced functionality in forms, there's always third-party form providers like JotForm, TypeForm that are super, super advanced with forms and you can link them field to field Zapier so that anytime a form is submitted, um, 
the all the fields will map right into a specific app or base. Um, okay, do we have any other closing questions? Emma, are we good? I think we're good. Okay, excellent. Should you have any other questions, please feel free to sign up. If you're not already signed up for a trial, we have a free forever account type, uh, which basically once you sign up, uh, if you don't upgrade within the next, within two weeks, it just downgrades you to a free forever account, but you always have access to the product. And just shoot us a message here, send us Loom videos. Um, if you want to add features to our product roadmaps, I'm really curious to hear from Daniel about all the different use cases he has for forms. And uh, maybe if he wants to record a quick Loom video and add it to the product roadmap or send it to us, we'll add it for him. Um, but yeah, we'd love to hear. And looking forward to seeing you on our next webinar. Thanks, everyone.